Okay, I think we're going to start off with a video first, please. Uh, ko te mātai ahu moni te kaupapa i tēnei wā. Kei te ako tātou ki te financial literacy. Kei te ako mātou pi hea te mei i ngā investing ki a whiwhi moni. Ko te mātai ahu moni ko te invest ki ngā momo kamupine ki a whai moni koe. Ko atu o moni ki e tai kamupine and mena ka pai tērā kamupine ka tepu i my name is Adam Lynch. I'm at Craig's Investment Partners here in town. Uh, I've been working with the, the financial literacy program here with Rong Fukata We Trust, and uh, it's been quite an awesome experience. And we're learning about investments and how to grow your wealth, and and why it's important, and what the what the economy is, and how how it relates to investing, and um, yeah, really why you need to grow your puti over time. Um, and the kids, the Tamariki just picked it up so quickly. Um, it's it's pretty amazing, you know, some of the concepts and, you know, they're coming back to me and asking me, hey, you know, we saw this main freight truck with, you know, the blue truck on the highway. And I'm saying, you know, we're having these coreros about, well, you know, you can actually be an owner in that business. You can put a little bit of putia to work, you know, be a shareholder in that business and, and, and grow that over time. We're going to be investing real funds, which is, I don't know anyone that's doing that in Aotearoa. It's quite good because they're actually going to be making real investment decisions that we all have to make in our lives. In a couple of years, they'll start feeling so comfortable with, with financial language, which is even different than English, really. It's, it's a whole new terminology. They'll have that understanding. So, you know, whether they go to, to school, university, or whatever they do in life, they'll understand how, how to invest, how to do things like KiwiSaver, why they need to do it. All these things that, that I believe are really important. Tuatahi mai he pi ki mihi nui tēnei ki Rungofukata Iwi Trust, nā rātou tēnei um, mahi i whakarite. Kei te mōhio tātou, um, ko a, a tātou nei mātua, um, mātua tipuna hoki, a ahakoa i whakapau kaha rātou i roto i a rātou ake mahi, kā re rātou um, I te mōhio, o etahi o rata, i te mōhio me pēha e, um, e tiaki i ngā moni, i, I o rata ake moni, nā reira, koe rā tētahi o ngā tino painga, kei te ako a tātou nei taiohi i noia nei, um, me nā kua whiwhi pūtea rātou, me aha, me aha, ara, kei tēnei huarahi, kei tēnā huarahi rā nei. Ki a tātou nei mātua, ki te hia hia koe, ki te whai atu i tēnei huarahi, Ko tākui ki a tātou katoa, ai, whāia. He mea nui tēnei kaupapa, kia mōhi o mātou, o kia pai ai tō mātou uh, ana mata. Kia kāte iwi mōri, ki te whiwhitea, kia whāia i o moimoia, me o whanga. Pai ngā moni, mehe mea. Kore o moni, o ka oroha. <laughs> mehe mea i nui te moni, nui ngā kai. Ai. Ki ora tato, ko te kia kia te manga, ko rakaia te awa, no hakatri aho, ko boil toku fano, ko David toku ingoa. Uh, welcome, and uh, just my name's David Boyle. Um, I just highlighted that I'm from uh, an area that has Mount Summers in the background and the Rakaia River running through our area, more commonly known as Ashburton or Ash Vegas for the locals. Um, it's great to have everyone here and thank you so much for participating today. This is a, a topic that is very dear to my heart and we've got some wonderful uh, speakers and presenters today in the panel discussion. And the topic is where should financial capability start in the home, school or community? So our panellists today, we've got Nick Thompson, Director of uh, Financial Capability, uh, Tawaka McLeod from the Whānau Engagement, Ka Ora, uh, Chrissy Matara, Matara uh, Ronga Wakata Iwi Trust, and with her is Ai O and Shidan from the, from the school who's going to talk 
talk a little bit about their experience that we've just witnessed on the video. And Victoria Harris, who's going to give, a, I think, a woman's perspective uh, in the community around this. Um, so thank you so much for, for attending this. And we really want to make this as interactive as possible. So uh, fire, fire through your questions uh, as we go through this panel discussion. Um, but girls, could I just ask you a couple of questions to kick things off? I know it's a little daunting in front of all these people, but um, can you tell us a little about your experience, perhaps, or in respect of, you know, kind of what have you learnt through that program and um, in respect of the, the insights of the program and money uh, that, that was run in your school? Kia ora, ko Ayo Bibiwata Harusta Kuingua. Ko Papatu Te Maunga, ko Te Arai Te Awa, ko Horaita Te Waka, ko Rungo Whakata Te Iwi, ko Ngai Tikiti Te Apu. My thoughts on the kaupapa were that it was very... Uh, a skill that a lot of people should know. And for us to have the opportunity to learn it at such a young age was great. Because most of the adults don't really know how to manage their money. And since we learnt it now, we get to make life easier, like work-wise, how to get a house and stuff. M money, it's, a, it's, a, it's something we all have, but sometimes it controls us, uh, and to learn a little bit more about it. What was the coolest thing that came out of that kind of session in respect of the, the content or something that was a real surprise or one of those aha moments of, I wonder, what are your thoughts there? Kia ora tātou, ko mana ori te maunga, ko te arai te awa, ko horai te te waka, ko mani tūki te marai, ko rongo whakata te iwi, ko ngāti kaipoho te apu, ko sheira mui tara ahau. Um, oh, the <laughs> It's a fair question. <laughs> what was cool? What was cool oh, yeah. from the program? Is cool was still cool, cool, a good thing to say? Is it a bit old fashioned? <laughs> <laughs> we learned about inflation. Ooh. And yeah, it was hard for us to understand at first, but the way our teachers taught it to us was through a game. They gave us chocolates and they held a <laughs> they held an auction and that's how we f figured out figured kind of it how out. inflation yeah. works. You saw my poor attempt at uh, saying a little Tereo and another learning another <laughs> language. I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I, I, I'll keep trying. The, the, the question that I'm interested in your views is our industry has a, a language and a lot of jargon which is kind of confusing. I mean, did you find it hard to understand some of the concepts or the, the things around money? Uh, and did there, you know, is this something that's more interesting that you can then take back home to your whanau as well and talk about it? Yeah. Financial literacy, when we first started learning, there were so many things that we didn't understand, like the ticker symbols. Matua was like, oh no, you have to find the ticker symbol. And we were like, why don't you just call it the name of the company? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then we understood that it was for a reason. Yeah. And dividend. That's very cool. Is there anything else on just, I'm going to go around the rest of the panel now, but is there anything that you could say to our industry that we could improve and provide more um, support in, in schools and in the community from your perspective because you are so lucky, you're nice and young and you've got lots of time to understand and build up your financial capabilities. W what do you think as an industry we could do to help, help, help you learn easier or learn more around, uh, around this topic? Um, I think edu educating people at a younger age into this kind of thing is is good because that's a good habit to get into for when you're older. It, uh, you can take it back to your own whānau too and they'll hopefully catch on. Spread the word. Yeah. 
That's great. Thank, thanks so much for sharing. And I know it's always a little intimidating coming up here, but I, we really appreciate you um, coming in. It was a long, a long journey today, wasn't it? You had to go from Gisborne down to Hawke's Bay and then come up here as well. So once again, thank you for making the time and effort. And um, good luck for the rest of the work that you do in your school and your communities around this. Tawaka, can I come to you next? And can you talk a little bit about the work that you're doing in your community and uh, kind of a little bit of background before we start looking ahead in the future? Kapai tēnā koe e David, um, Rawiri. Uh, tēnā rā tātou, uh, he rau kura tēnei no te maunga tītoa ea, uh, ko tarana ki tērā. Um, he honu ngā hoki ki rua peu, uh, ki ngai tā uhoke. No reira, tēnā koutou whai rawa. Uh, Kia ora. <laughs> Um, kia ora tātou. Um, uh, my name is Te Waka Rua Paunamu MacLeod and I hail from the centre of the universe, Waitara. Um, hands up, who's been to Waitara? Yes! <laughs> um, I work for an organisation called Ka Uru Ora. Um, I also work for Superlife um, and we have a kaupapa called Ka Uru Ora that helps whānau uh, to go through financial literacy, so working with Sorted, uh, then on to... Uh, far no engagement around what the process looks like to get into home ownership, and then to walking them through the bank process of getting a mortgage, and then also the iwi offering a whare to our far no shared equity. So the process is not only from financial literacy, but right the way through to handing the keys over to a far no that might not be able to get in on the open market. So uh, currently we work with five of the eight Taranaki iwi and uh, we are spreading, so if you fuck up to another iwi, um, ask them about joining Ka Uru Ora. Um, and so that's what we do, and it's more just walking with our whānau um, in those spaces that aren't necessarily something that our whānau talk about all the time. Um, money's not something that is a common conversation within our whānau, and so that's just bringing to light what, um, yeah, I mean, money is something that we have to deal with all our lives. So, sounds great, um, and we look forward to hearing more around what you think the future should look like in respect of your your focus as well. Nick, lovely to have you. Love you here. Love love you. Love you here. <laughs> lovely to have you here. I love you too, David. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. Um, you work for a, the commission, and you know that's a little dear spot in my heart. And and I had spent some time there. Um, one of the things I keep hearing, and it really gets, gets, gets me a bit grumpy, is that we, we always say, well, financial educational literacy or capability should be in schools. Well, it actually is. So why don't you tell, tell us a bit about the work that, that you've done or that are doing in the Commission around the um, bringing financial capability alive in the curriculum at schools? Yeah, sure. Um, kia ora everyone. Uh, my name's Nick and I'm the Director of Financial Capability at Te Ara Ahuna Order, which is also known as the Retirement Commission. And um, David is absolutely right. There's this misconception that financial education is not actually being taught in the classroom. And for the last four years, uh, the Commission has worked extensively in this space to stand up an incredible financial capability program uh, called Sorted in Schools, um, or it has a beautiful te reo Māori name called Te Whai Hua Kia ora. And Sorted in Schools is a free financial capability program available for secondary schools throughout Aotearoa. It's for students um, between years 9 and years 13, and it's taught um, by teachers. And it's taught right across the curriculum, so it's taught in English, um, social sciences, maths. It can even be taught in uh, physical education and health. And how the program works is we, um, my team at the Commission develops um, some incredible financial education materials that are available on our um, Sorted in Schools website, and teachers can go there and download those materials um, and teach them in the classroom, but we also support teachers uh, with gaining their own skills and competencies around financial capability so that they feel comfortable with delivering this program in the classroom. 
Um, and in terms of kind of, I guess, what kid, kids learn about, um, they learn about things like KiwiSaver, they learn about insurance, they learn about retirement planning, they learn about investing, they learn about debt, they learn about savings, and they learn about uh, managing your money. Those are the kind of seven key areas that we're wanting every New Zealander um, to have the skills and competencies in so that they can have a stronger future. Um, the program has been hugely successful over the last four years. We've worked really, really hard. Uh, we have over 1,400 teachers in New Zealand that are um, registered for the program, that are delivering it in the classroom, um, and we have over 80% of, uh, of kura and um, of secondary schools that have actually registered for the program. And in the last year, we've just completed our usage data and found that 68% of schools in Kura throughout Aotearoa have actually used the program in the classroom in the last 12 months, which is incredibly impressive based on what has happened with COVID. Well done. I think it's a great start. Maybe a little bit of an ambulance at the top of the cliff rather than at the bottom. Oh, crikey. Sorry, I'll just pop my belt here. I'll leave it here. Um, that's great news, and I think you know, all of us probably have a really good responsibility to kind of say that there is stuff going on in schools, um, and I'd, I'd recommend that you have a look at the Sorted website, and, and more importantly, Sorted in Schools. Content there is great, and uh, doing some great work. Victoria Harris from The Curve, how are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> and also from Devon as well, investment yes. manager. Yes. Um, tell us a bit about the work that you've been doing in the, you know, with the curve and more with a focus or lens uh, around women. Yeah, so um, as David said, I kind of, I'm wearing two, two hats at the moment. Uh, my day job is a, um, a portfolio manager at Devon Funds. Um, and then I guess my night job or my, <laughs> um, my weekends uh, are filled by running uh, a financial education platform for women, or for anyone that's really been left out of the investing conversation, um, called The Curve. And we set it up about, about 18 months ago. Um, I mean, I've been in the industry for uh, nearly 12 years now. And one thing I really noticed uh, a few years back was the number of uh, my friends and, and, and women in, in my community coming up to me, kind of asking, you know, hey Vic, can, you, can I sit down with you for five minutes? Can we grab a coffee? I just don't get this investing stuff. I know I should be doing more, but it's so confusing. And it comes back to, you know, the finance does have a different, different language. Um, it's intimidating, it's scary, it, um, and it creates this kind of divide, I guess. Um, and so uh, I was more than happy to sit down uh, with, with, with those women and, and, and chat through, you know, some basic concepts around investing. Uh, but what really, uh, what I really noticed was there was nowhere for these women to go, um, and a lot of them didn't have someone like like myself where they could who they could sit down with to discuss this this kind of stuff. So, we, we set up the curve, and you know the response. Um, you know, I'm kicking myself I didn't do it earlier to be honest, because um, the response has been been amazing, which is probably a good thing. Good good thing and a bad thing, um, which just goes to show the kind of the need for this um, just. A place that to go to to break down all those really confusing concepts and um, to not make finance boring because I think that's the biggest hindrance is that you know when we're talking about money you know sometimes it is in really boring terms and people lose interest or um, they don't get the concept and so it's you know bringing bringing investing and um, you know growing your wealth and understanding your money into really really basic everyday terms that makes it easy to understand easy to comprehend and exciting to actually. Um, and, and empowering to do. Um, and we focused on women specifically um, because women are much more likely to end up in financial hardship. Um, and there's a number of reasons behind that, but we just, uh, you know, we're much more equal participants in the workforce now, but we just really still lack that investing, um, investing knowledge. So we focus on women. Uh, we started out focusing on kind of that uh, 20 to 30 year age gap um, and now it's just you know we have we do we do talks in schools um, we get we get messages from 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 young young girls we get messages from um, unfortunately women who have gone through divorce or um, their, you know their marriage has ended or their partner uh, their, their husband or their, or their partner has passed away and they've got to learn this stuff really quickly 
um, to, you know, we had a KiwiSaver event and we had a 90-year-old there learning about KiwiSaver. So <laughs> I didn't have the heart to tell her that <laughs> she's a bit, bit old, but, um, but no, it was, it was, um, it's great to see it's just, you know, this, this, this stuff, you know, can be, re um, can be taught, you know, at, at any age, but obviously, you know, the younger the better and it's great to see, you know, young girls, especially like yourselves, learning this stuff because it's so, so valuable and it brings, you know, financial freedom, flexibility, choice. It just brings, you know, so many options to, to you um, throughout your life. So, Great work. And it is um, a topic that Women in Super, the FSC, have uh, been driving and, again, encouraging a lot of participation and work in that area. So, as, again, industry providers, we all need to, to, to contribute to that and then the topics and, and, I guess, all the audiences that you guys are representing today as well. So we've got plenty of stuff kind of going on around the community, around the industry. Um, I'm, I'm really more interested looking forward now. So rather than looking back and what has or hasn't worked per se, Nick, I wonder if I could start with you because you've got quite a holistic view, if you like, around more of the research and information that the Commission has available from your perspective, what, what would the future state be right from your perspective if we were you know, heading into that perfect world of uh, New Zealanders being more financially capable and, I guess, improving their own well financial well-being? Yeah, it's a really good question and there's, uh, it's got quite an interesting answer to it from my perspective. Um, <laughs> The first thing that I think that we need to address is that we've got quite a fragmented approach towards financial education in Aotearoa and we need to um, look at that and we need to figure out where there is duplication, where there's great programs happening and we need to make sure that we uh, think about financial education over someone's lifetime. So what does someone need to know in primary school? What does someone need to know in secondary school? What does someone need to know when they're going into the workplace, whether they're going on a vocational education pathway or a tertiary education pathway, right up to retirement when you need to know um, skills and capabilities around decumulation and things like that with money. So we need to um, we need to fix the fact uh, the fragmented approach uh, first. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing that we need to focus on is there is some audiences that need this um, need our help more than others, and they there's four kind of key audiences that we should be focusing on, and that is Maori, that is Pacific people, that is women, and that is younger New Zealanders. And I just want to kind of add in another point around um, three of those audiences, which is Māori, Pacific people, and women. And that is that there is a pay gap that is happening there. And that is also um, preventing us from having, um, from those, from Māori, Pacifica, and women from having a stronger financial future as well. So we really need to address um, not only the um, education side of things, but we also need to address the equality side of things so that everyone can arrive, I guess, at retirement in the same kind of shape. Um, there's a couple of other things as well. Every New Zealander, like we talk a lot about that New Zealanders need to know a lot about savings and we hear that quite a lot. But New Zealanders actually need to know a whole heap more than just savings to be financially capable. They need to know about KiwiSaver. They need to know about insurance. They need to know about retirement planning. They need to know about debt. They need to know about savings and they need to know about managing their money. And they also need to know about investing. And so if, um, if we were able to get all of um, the people of Aotearoa to be um, skilled and competent and motivated and confident around all of those subjects, um, we would be doing a whole heap better. And the last thing um, that we do need to also think about is there is a huge difference between being financially literate and being financially capable. Being financially literate is um, I have the skills and confident I have the skills to know what to do with money. 
but being financially capable is I have the skills, I have the knowledge, I have the motivation, and I have the confidence to be able to put in place what I've learned. And so we need to shift our education programs from being programs that just um, uh, financial literacy programs to programs that are actually financially capable, capability programs, sorry, uh, that help New Zealanders with their financial future. Yeah, no, they're pretty good words and wisdom. You're singing from my songbook. I love that. Uh, the other I, I, initiative that I see that you are working on is getting some commonality or jargon busting some of the terminology that we use in our, in our industry, which is pretty jargon filled. And if we can get some key themes or the right words that everyone uses, singing from, again, the same songbook, uh, would be a, a pretty helpful cause, much as what we did back in the day with KiwiSaver. Tawaka, think, thinking about your focus around community and, and the work that you're doing, where do you see the future in, in that? What, where are the areas that you would love to see improved or that you're working on that will you know, kind of improve that, you know, the community area? Yeah, kia ora. Um, I think looking to the future, we always have to look back, and that's a very Māori way of looking at the world. Um, I think specifically for us, because we do work with our uri of Taranaki um, at the moment, uh, we need to remember, you know, uh, we, we've started on loss, you know. There's a trauma and a loss of language, of land, of identity and, and confidence. And so from there, we've been building... And, you know, celebrating Te Wiki o Te Reo Māori last week isn't just celebrating the language, it's celebrating everything that comes with being a Māori. Yeah. And, um, and so I think for us as Māori, um, we are helping to continue that building of uh, our whānau who um, need their confidence and identity, um, language, reo, and then you could, I mean, you could keep adding things to that and then money, you know, so... Um, so I think looking forward, it's helping our whānau to, uh, number one, step through for Fuka Uruora, is, is step through the door or sign up online. Um, there's a word, whakamā. A lot of our whānau are shy and are afraid uh, to even sign up to a financial literacy programme because they're worried and scared about what might be exposed because there's a vulnerability that comes with exposing what you don't know and what you uh, maybe have gotten yourself into um, prior to signing up to a course. So I think um, looking to the future, it's how do we build the confidence within our own people of, of, um, of Taranaki at this stage um, to be confident in their Taranaki tanga um, and then being able to uh, start working towards um, what, what financial capability looks like within their whānau. Um, I know for, for a lot of our whānau, um, a house, you know, is something that uh, we aspire to have. And I think that because we have a wraparound whānau dynamic where we're starting with financial literacy but also handing over keys at the other end, um, just owning a whare is, is gen intergenerational wealth. And that's what we're talking about when we talk about investing uh, financial literacy and home ownership for our whānau. So I think looking forward, it's just um, continuing to build that confidence within our whānau to step out, uh, to be vulnerable, but not only vulnerable, vulnerable in a safe space that we provide our whānau in. Um, a lot of the language that's, as we, we've all spoken about, a lot of the language within this world is way beyond some of our whānau's heads. And so what does it look like for your organisations to engage in te reo Māori and te ao Māori so that our people can understand and, and feel like they can fit into these conversations because there's not a lot of organisations that um, someone like me who's a confident Māori woman feel like I can walk into confidently. So I encourage you as an organisation who works in this industry to uh, challenge the way that you do your mahi and um, get people and experts in to help you be able to speak a language to our people, um, to, to, to Māori. And, and I specifically speak to Māori because that's who I'm working with. Kia ora. Kia ora, thank you. That is uh, words of wisdom and hopefully is a, a bit of a challenge for us to, to build on. I, I wonder, just on that topic, before we move over to the next, to Chrissy, thinking about your... Um, 
the way you connect with, with whanau, is, uh, the engagement process, is that changing te technology-wise at all, or is it, is it better face-to-face -face or in, in the home environment? Yeah, I think we see a mixture of different... I mean, we're working with all ages, so um, because of COVID, obviously, we've been doing our literacy courses online, um, and that's actually worked really well. But I think, again, in a true Māori way, we love to connect our kanohi, yeah. and we love to be able to... Um, one of the things in our literacy programmes is when they do get vulnerable, they're sitting with their cousins, and that can be nerve-wracking, but it also is liberating, and um, I think that's something that uh, we will continue to work towards. We still haven't gone back to physical courses, but right. I think kanohi to kanohi, um, face to face, is how we, um, it's kind of what we've grown up with. But I think with the change of generations, we're learning to adapt and we'll continue to learn to adapt. Well, I think the work that you're doing is great, and the storytelling and also the beginning and ending to, a, to an outcome, particularly going into a housing, is amazing. Chrissy, thinking about schools, particularly in the work that you're doing, um, what, what would you see the future for the students today, but also the students for tomorrow, around how we can build more connectivity or supporting the future of of, of, of the children or um, Tamariki in respect of their financial well-being. Tēnā koe, David, me o mihi kia, kia mātou. Um, o tira e te whare e tēnā koutou katoa, uh, ko Chrissy Moitara hau, he uri tēnei nō ngā puhi uh, nō rongo whakāta hoki. Um, and I think if you think about those two regions, ngā puhi up north and um, Rongo Whakata, which is uh, the tribal um, grouping that comes from Gisborne, Gisborne City, um, Te Tairawhiti, and I think it's it's pretty similar to where um, Te Waka comes from, uh, Waitara, is that um, our region and our um, our numbers are always at the bottom of any, um, any data. So... Um, for the Rongo Whakata Iwi Trust, uh, where our, our purpose or where we want to move to is about, um, is to think about what our vitality narratives are. And if we go back um, 160 years ago, Rongo Whakata was pumping as an iwi. Um, we were out, we, um, ran the trades in, in Gisborne at the time, and we were landowners um, businessmen. Um, 150 years ago, our whare was taken um, and now sits in Te Papa. Um, it is the, the focal point of arts in New Zealand, we like to say, um, of art excellence. And that house there sort of is a symbol of the time when um, Rung Whakata's backs were broken. So um, we, this year, um, we ended our term as iwi in residence at Te Papa. And so with that closing of that exhibition, we, um, 170 of our tonga were, were returned home um, to the whānau that owned them. Uh, we also returned uh, institutional tonga that came from Rongo Whakata back to the institutions around the country. Uh, what we've also done is we've been, began talking about the return of that whare that sits in Te Papa. Te Hoki Tūranga is the name. And Te Hoki Tūranga literally means, translated means, um, the vitality of Tūranga. And so our purpose at Rongo Whakata at the moment is to, is to, while we think about returning the house back to, to Gisborne, is about returning and restoring vitality to our people. And so this programme that we're running with Craig's, um, it actually was a proposal from one of Craig's um, kaimahi, Adam Lynch, um, and I think he's an innovative young <laughs> surfing American um, that has come into um, that. Gisborne is really fortunate to have um, you know have on board in their in their team. He actually proposed it um, back to Rongofukata Iwi Trust to come into the um, to deliver a program with our kura, with our kids around financial literacy. And, um, and so our trustees um, made the decision, um, thought it was a really innovative approach, 
um, both for the trust, um, but an opportunity, a great opportunity for our rangatahi to have a real experience around investing. So um, an amount of money has been set aside for our rangatahi to invest. Um, so they're, they're playing with real dollars, they're having real life experience here. Um, our vitality is in our rangatahi, it's in our youth. And I've sat in on the classes and I am just a little bit past 21, but um, <laughs> you know the things that I'm sitting in, in their class listening to, I'm overwhelmed because I have no idea. Um, I can't translate the language, the jargon that you, you spoke about really early. And the kids, they take it, they take it on the chin, right? So they, they pick it up really quickly. And um, as I was sitting in there, I was thinking, oh my God. And I, I sit in there um, alongside other parents that were able to sit in the class. Um, I, I'm not sure if you know of Ricardo Christie. He's a, um, a, a well-known surfer from, um, that's in Gisborne at the moment. He sits in on the class too. And we're all go going, why didn't we learn this in school? Um, and so, I, you know, we got bank books. Um, every week, and then we, we were allowed to put a, I don't know, probably it was, would have been a dollar from my house, or oh, maybe 50 cents. It was like 20 to, cents for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's, our, that's what we learnt in our generation, and um, so while the kids are learning now, they're picking up really quickly. I'm still, ta I'm still um, getting there, but I'm one of those women that, that have little understanding. I'm Māori, I'm one of those Māori that have little understanding. Um, or little knowledge of. So to sit in Adam's class, I'm like, wow. <laughs> there's, there's putting the money under the pillow. That's what banking looks like. That's what bonds looks like. That's what investing in homes look like. And that's what shares looks like. And so it makes absolute sense. And me and my other parents are like going, wow. <laughs> and these kids are like, are they even listening? <laughs> um, but um, the girls have prepared some kōrero around some of their learnings. Um, and and actually, you don't know they're learning until they, they, they open their mouths and they, they, um, they talk about it. So for us, that's our vitality. That's our investment into our rangatai is about um, ensuring um, that we have an, a vital iwi going forward. Yes. Um, they're our tomorrow. Uh, and so it's, it's really important that in, in whichever areas that the, the iwi trust is working, that we have rangatahi, um, rangatahi following in behind to learn, to um, be able to share their voice too. So, I mean, I think there's a little bit of something in there for the iwi trust. You know, um, our rangatahi are out-the-box thinkers. So... What, what we don't invest in, what Adam doesn't invest in for us, for Rung Fakata, the, the kids have picked some, some have, have made some choices based on, on where they're at the, at the moment. Yeah. That's brilliant, brilliant. It's great to see it working and being alive and, and transforming because we know if you have the worries, the worry of money or the stress of money off your shoulders, it improves not only your financial well-being but your overall well-being. It's from a health perspective, it's a big, big issue. Fantastic stuff. Um, what am I going to? Oh, sorry, oh, I forgot. I got one more to go. Haven't I, Victoria? Sorry. Crikey, what, from your perspective, um, and you know, you might have a bit of pressure here with these young ladies coming through managing money in the future, which would be fantastic because we need more women, obviously, in our industry. It always, unfortunately, is a you know, rather uh, male dominated, so we need to encourage the next generation through. I mean, what's your thoughts on the future uh, for, for women, and how do we encourage not only the, the conversation but to get uh, more women involved in our in, in investing and in our services. Yeah, I think I think it's it's more diversity in, in general. Um, you know, gender diversity as well as kind of yeah, age diversity, you know, ethnicity, all of that. Everyone brings such a uniqueness when you're uh, when you're investing, and you don't have to be. Um, or look a certain way to kind of spot those investing trends or be really good at investing um, because we're all kind of, uh, you know, part and parcel of this of this world and therefore we're consumers or we're users of products and services um, that are 
you know, that, that we, of companies that we can invest in. So we're, we're out there, you know, spotting and identifying these trends just as, just as much as the next person. But I do think, yes, there is a, a lack of women in the industry, um, something that I've noticed over my, my few years in the industry. Um, so it would be great to see, yeah, like young, women's, young women like themselves are coming through. Um, and, you know, I just think it would then create a bit more of a, um, you know, inclusiveness in the industry as well as... Um, uh, you know, providing someone to look up to or to, you know, to be like, um, you know, providing that kind of, um, that, in that inclusiveness. But I think also we need to kind of break down some of the misconceptions around investing, um, you know, that it is kind of an exclusive club. And I think, you know, the, uh, the DIY platforms like Sheezy's and Hatch have done a great job at bringing investing to the masses um, and investing with, you know, a dollar rather than having to have a whole lot of money to even start the investing conversation. Um, so they've done a great job at that. I think uh, removing the misconception that uh, it's really risky and you could lose a lot of money, I think we need to put more of a positive spin on it and talk about how it can actually change change your life um, and change your, your the projection of your future. Um, and yes, if you're young, you can take more risk and then, you know, learn all, all those concepts and uh, talk about scenarios and, you know, if this is, if you keep your KiwiSaver in, in this fund, you know, what will you, what will your future end up looking like? And if you change this, you know, we're doing, and we, we are constantly, um, you know, doing trial and error with this at the curve around is like, what is that tipping point that makes someone go, Oh my gosh! And kind of sit and sit up and like you know wake up and go. I need to take um, you know I take this seriously, and I need to actually you know start doing this because we all lead busy lives and we can learn this stuff you know till the cows come home. But it's actually putting it into practice, and like you said about actually having the confidence to put it into practice as well. Um, and so I think it's really important to create those communities. You know, be vulnerable. Um, and and provide those places where you can go and say, look, I still don't understand, or um, you know, not be afraid to be like, look, I don't get it. Uh, and you know, having the, that support network and those people around you, whether it's a school, whether it's at home, whether it's at, in the community, where you can go and, and be vulnerable and and realize you don't need to, <laughs> you know, you don't need to know everything. And investing is like a a muscle and it does, you know, it, it, the more you use it, the better it gets. <laughs> and so it's really about, you know, not expecting to be an expert on day one, but, you know, the sooner you start learning this stuff, um, the better, yeah. Very cool. Um, and I think, you know, you mentioned KiwiSaver. I always thought that was going to be a wonderful catalyst because of, you know, so many New Zealanders will be investing, they don't even know that, through, through KiwiSaver and they can see perhaps some of the, uh, you know, the changes and particularly market fluctuations and how that impacts your, your dollar or your investment. Um, I don't know if you guys have had negative returns, but, but, but I think as an industry we've been challenged with that over this last six to eight months. But it's, it's, a, it's, it's about learning and I guess keep the momentum going. Um, so I'm, I'm going to open up, I've got some questions here that I'm going to throw out to the panellists because there's some really good ones here. Um, the first one I'd like to ask is for all panellists, what's one thing you personally champion when talking to others about money, which I think is a really good topic. Um, Chrissy, what about you? Have you got any, what's the one thing that you, you kind of champion around that? Um, start with KiwiSaver, and then, um, but I've, I'm just telling everybody about it, um, everyone, um, if you ask my whanau, I'm telling them we need to invest, we need to, we need to understand what that world is, because um, it makes absolute sense. Uh, sorry, I, this is going off the question though, but you know, it, it's quite difficult when you, when, with financial capability, is many of us do not have the capability. So if we're, we're trying to figure out, do we buy a bread or do we mm. put that money aside somewhere? You know, the, it's very challenging. The noise of life yeah, gets it's, in the way. It's, it's a real issue yep. for many of us. So, um, yeah. But I, I, I think it's awesome. I, I'm amazed. It's great. <laughs> Again. Girls, would you, we'd like to... Have you got a thought around what's one thing that you take have taken out and shared with your... With your fr with your friends at all, and uh, from what you've learnt so far, is there anything particular that comes to mind? 
or we could let you think about it, and then you can, I'll come back to you if you like, or if you've got something on your mind. Come back. Yes. Tawaka, what's, what's your, you know, the thing that you highlight whenever you're talking about this? Yeah, I think we, d we don't know what we don't know. So I think education um, is key for our whanau and making sure that there's places and spaces for them to learn whatever they need to learn. Um, and, I, and I know that it's, for, for me, it started in the home and just going back to the original panel, <laughs> does it start, you know, in the home? I think what's modelled to you, and if it's not modelled to you, then you, someone needs to teach you. Someone needs to teach you what to do with it. So I think education for me is key. Great. Victoria? Um, I think ours is um, kind of start now. <laughs> There's kind of, you know, you're never too old um, or, you know, you're never, you've never missed the boat. Um, you know, a lot of people will, will talk about, um, you know, sometimes how much money they've made or a really good investment idea. But, you know, the great thing with the stock market is that there's always investment opportunities that are creating themselves. Um, so, you know, never think that you've missed the boat um, and start now, even if it's with a dollar. Um, if you, that, mean, that means you're, you are prioritising future you. Um, so just you know, start now, even with, even with a dollar, um, is, is better than, than nothing, nothing. And, and, and putting it off. Um, because you know, a lot of the women that we talk to, um, they wake up and it's five years later, and you know, they've missed out on a lot of those, those um, gains that they could have made, so yeah. Good stuff. Nick? Uh, similar, but a little bit different. Um, I, I kind of know the research about um, New Zealanders and savings, and I know how terrible we are at savings. And so um, I always like to check, because um, I love talking about money with all my friends and family, I always like to check, do you have an emergency savings um, available? Because if you do have emergency savings available, then you're less likely to have to borrow. Um, and I always kind of check about that. That's one of the big key things that I do. And I, um, I also send everyone to our Sorted website at work, which is sorted.org.nz, so check that out if you haven't already. <laughs> Very cool. Can you repeat that? Oh, sorry. Uh, where is it? Oh, yeah, where, I think it's gone. I've taken off my... So what's one thing that you would uh, talk to your friends or family that uh, ab about investing or savings that comes to mind? What's the first thing that kind of comes to mind that you would say, you should do this? Or you should just do it? I think it's pretty similar to start early because now we've learned that when you take loans, it's not very doesn't really pay off in the future. You've got to pay more back anyways. And if you invest now, then you'll have enough money to use instead of paying people back more. Yeah, good. Well, there's good debt and bad debt, isn't there? Um, but certainly that's, that's great. Um, so my one, because I'm not on the panel, but I was going to say something anyway, um, is I always think pay yourself first. Uh, you know, we, we have to pay everyone. Um, we always think about what we have to pay, but we should be paying ourselves first before, uh, before anyone else and treat every payday as something special because once it's gone, it's never going to come back again. And, and when you look at someone my age, I haven't got that many paydays left. So, bit of a worry. <laughs> okay, another question from uh, the floor is, how do we get parents talking to their tamariki about money and so when they learn about it in school, they have a good foundation. Chrissy, what are your thoughts there in respect of... I think through this program, it's about having our rangatahi talk to our parents. Um, yeah, does that answer? Yeah, yeah, no, no it does. <laughs> yeah, because there'll be parents, a lot of parents, that don't and haven't been taught. So taking it back home... Mm, and because I think it's been said before, it is, there is a um, money's not talked about in our settings um, or in our spaces. There's whakama or the you know um, that shyness or um, that that humility or you know being afraid of of um, what other people know about you. So um, 
And so we just don't talk about these things. I mean, parents don't even talk about to their kids about their hardship. So um, with the kids, it's just one way for us to turn around what that looks like, flip it up, flip it over, and have the kids talk back, talk to us about it. Um, I'm, I'm interested in, the, in in what's going on in, in the kura. Um, I think there's for our kura, we know that teachers' capacity is really, really limited um, to be able to add something new um, into their into their programs or above and beyond what the, what they are delivering, particularly in a um, in a small kura like Manatuki where the girls are. Um, so how um, I think why um, with Craig's coming in and, and providing that expertise as opposed to a teacher um, is, is helpful. Uh, I think one of our classes at school is actually using that program. Um, so we've got one on, on the um, Taha Auraki, which is the mainstream side using the um, sorted program. And then our one's on Te Whanau Reo Māori, which is the um, by, um, total immersion side working with Adam. Right. So, um, yeah, I, one of my um, IELTS mum is sitting over there who's a teacher, so I know, I sort of understand what their challenges are in school to be able to deliver something above and beyond their, um, their current programs. It's, it's very tough. Teachers have got so many other things other than just education to be managing in the, in the school environment. Tuaka, what, what are your thoughts in respect of um, that, that conversation at home or taking it home or, or getting parents involved in Fano. Yeah, I think we're seeing that modelled in, in some of our um, courses we run. But also, uh, so we have a thing called Fano Saver, uh, which sits next to Kiwi Saver, so side by side. Um, and the iwi actually contribute dollar for dollar, depending on how many iwi you whakapapa to, um, to your hundred dollars. So that's another system that... Uh, that we've set up with Superlife. Um, and I think for our whanau, it's um, parents and grandparents and great-grandparents actually learning about what it might mean to invest um, in their mokopuna, in their tamariki from the day they're born. Um, and so I think um, the iwi, and this is my personal, the iwi have a responsibility to also educate our whanau around this. Um, and I take my hat off to the five of our Taranaki iwi who have signed up to this kopapa because uh, we're enabling our whānau and our parents in the iwi space, so not in a school space, in the iwi space, to provide platforms for them to engage right. and then to be able to teach their whānau. Fantastic. Victoria, what are your thoughts? Any, any thoughts on that? I mean, do you, did you, did you, when you were at home, when you were a, a, a child, did you talk about money in those days? Yeah, I think um, I actually was very fortunate to get introduced to investing through my through my mum, which was was quite rare back then. Um, and even though I didn't really understand what investing was, I just remember getting kind of these checks in the mail, which were dividend checks, and I was like, <laughs> "This investing stuff is great." Um, but um, but it sparked sparked an interest in me about, and I think it was more about opening the conversation around money in the home and you know realizing it's like spending saving and investing you know and, and talking about um, you know not making money a, t a taboo subject that's not discussed in the home you know and talking about the value of money growing money spending money all those things um, and I think that just really opens up the conversation when we get older around money um, and you know so there's no kind of shame or or, or stigma around money, or you know, we can we can also voice um, that we that we want more, or that we we want to grow our wealth um, and not be kind of uh, ashamed about that either. So, uh, but we we do hear a common narrative um, around, you know, uh, my dad used to speak to my brothers about investing and never me, and that's kind of um, a really generational. Uh, thing that we're, we're, we're trying to fix is around, you know, having those conversations with, with all your children, whether they're girls or boys. Um, but also, we also get a lot of comments around uh, things like, oh, me and 
my daughter now listen to your podcast on the way to school instead of listening to the radio because I want I don't want her to be in the same position that I'm in when I'm this age. So those kind of things are, are really when we hear those, it's just like it's you know very very humbling and it's and it's great to see um, you know kind of mothers taking control and not wanting their daughters to be in the same position and stuff. So um, yeah, I think um, yeah definitely uh, there's there's things that can be done in the home definitely. Like any thoughts or. Uh, very similar. Look, I think New Zealanders aren't good about talking about money, and one of the key reasons that we're not good about talking about it because we're not literate in it. You know, we don't we don't have the skills and competencies around it all, so we don't want to share that information. Um, but that, that is the power of education, and we see the exact same thing happening when we've got um, kids that come through like our Sorted in Schools program, that they actually go home and they have that all with their family and they start talking about money. And so that's, that's why education is so important, because it starts the conversation. Um, that's why our campaigns that we do about getting people to talk about money or ask any question that no qu um, question's a silly question, that's why those things are so important important so that we can um, fix this big gap in New Zealand where a lot of people just don't know about money um, and that they don't have things like schools programs that they've been through um, and if we've got to kind of catch them up in some way. Brilliant. I've got one more question because we're just about nearing t the end of the session. Um, social media, love it or hate it, uh, what are your thoughts in respect of, uh, as an enabler, that we can use social media, TikTok, I don't know anything about it, but I mean, um, is that a place where we, we should be playing as an industry or getting that information out? I'd, I'd, I'd love to get your thoughts. Um, Nick, first, I mean, you, just quickly on that, I mean, social media, do you utilise that? Podcasts and web webcam, you know, a live broadcast, what, what, what do you where, think it's an enabler or a distractor? Well, I think it's it's where young New Zealanders are going. So we've got to be really mindful that young New Zealanders are um, absorbing TikTok, they're on watching YouTube content, they're on Instagram. So we need to shift to those platforms because those platforms need to have really great financial uh, education and financial information available. That's how young New Zealanders want to learn. Um, and so that's my, my view is that there's, there's no issue about the channel of delivery. It's about making sure that we're on that channel and making sure that we've got really good quality information on that channel for young New Zealanders. And I guess engaging content because it can be a pretty boring topic. But actually, you know, if, if we can utilise, you know, social media as part of that, I'd, I'd hope that that's a really great vehicle. Um, look, we're pretty much near time. <sighs> We could keep talking about this is such an awesome topic and one that uh, from all the panellists' insights gives me confidence that there is actually a lot going on. I think if we can join the dots a bit more in respect of the, the consistency of the information, the focus on what those key priorities are and find more engaging ways to direct and connect with um, our Fano, our Tamariki, our community, bringing all that to life, I think, will be fantastic. So, look, thank you so much on behalf of the FSC. Uh, I ask that everyone would uh, th thank our panelists for today's discussion. <laughs>